Mark Selby, uh, CEO of Canada Nickel, uh, advancing the Crawford Nickel Project uh, and unlocking the Timmins Nickel District, which we believe will be the world's largest nickel sulfide district. Marcus, you've had a heck of a week. Um, nice share response to um, the latest announcement for the latest um, uh, large corporate to kind of come in uh, to your, not just Crawford, Crawford Project, but the, the company as a whole. Um, tell us about the Samsung deal. Was involved? Yeah, so um, it's been a great start to the year. Yeah, two deals, uh, the last one being Samsung. Uh, a couple things. One, uh, they're they're uh, taking uh, about an 8% interest in the company, which puts another $25 million cash in the till. And most importantly, you know, they've got the uh, option to buy 10% of the Crawford project at a valuation of a billion dollars US. So, you know, that's about... Uh, about seven dollars a share, uh, you know, given our current share count, which is a little higher than where our current share price is. Right. So, okay, that was that. Then we had, and I'm going to come back to that, okay, because something yeah. really, really important to understand then in terms of the validation of the project, and the endorsement of the project yeah. by an Asian corporate. Okay, um, the Agnico Eagle also recently came in for a big chunk of change uh, just before Christmas. So they're the largest mining company in Canada. Uh, they did a back end of a flow through deal, which puts uh, thirty five million dollars uh, for us to go exploring and unlock uh, the Timmins. Uh, you know, the other half a dozen Crawfords that we think we have, or more, uh, in in the Timmins Nickel Nickel District. They're Canada's largest mining company. They run two big lower grade open pit gold mines that are the same scale that we have with Crawford. So uh, it's a massive endorsement, uh, you know, for us, and we're really glad to be you know chance to be working with both companies. Right. And then, obviously, we we also had um, Anglo American in there for some time as well. So not one, not two, but three big corporates in there. What does uh, uh, Anglo get out of it, and how do those three work together? Yeah. So, so again, you don't really want to have. Well, you know, in terms of why three, um, you know, the key key piece there is, you know, th we want to make sure that uh, you know we've got a clear endorsement, you know, to institutional investors. You know, for those guys who've been sitting on the sideline, and you know worried about Indonesia, you've got an Asian battery maker, you know, one of the world's largest battery makers, you know, we've got, you know, pretty busy trying to grow their business at, at uh, you know, almost a triple digit uh, growth rates. You know, they came to Canada, and they picked us. And, you know, they're valuing the project just Crawford, you know, at a six times, you know, our current share price. Uh, so, you know, if that doesn't say that these projects are needed, these projects need to be built as quickly as possible. And yes, Indonesia is going to produce a lot of nickel, but they want clean, green nickel from North America to supply, you know, Western battery plants. Right. So, so and, that's, so please, if you don't mind just the point with yeah. regards to, because obviously you got three people, three yeah. big groups, three big balance sheets that each will want something from this. So how, yeah. how, how does that, how does it all work together? Yeah. So it, it, yeah, sorry, come back to that part. Yeah, no, it works well because so Ang Anglo's, you know, piece has been, look, we've got a whole suite of future smart technologies that we disclosed uh, in the release. You know, they think they can add additional value to uh, these types of uh, ultra mafic deposits. And so, you know, uh, so so again, they're very focused on, on unlocking value sort of down that particular path. In, in terms of, you know, Agnico Eagle, you know, they basically uh, provided funding for a giant, uh, giant flow through raise, which has to be used on exploration type dollars. So, you know, what they're really interested, you know, in seeing, you know, based on that financing is really, you know, seeing sort of, you know, how much of this nickel resource, do we really have six Crawfords there, you know, and can we, you know, m multiply the scale of the resource that we already have and, you know, really prove out that we are sitting on the world's largest nickel district. And then you've got Samsung, who's really, you know, primarily focused on the offtake. You know, they've got, uh, if they make the 10% investment in the project, then they get 10% life of mine uh, offtake, and they get a further 20% for 15 years. So, so each of them is, 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 uh, you know, is somewhat complementary. So, you know, it works out quite well and, and we're not expecting, I'm not expecting any bun fights, you know, between, between each of those groups in terms of how we move things forward. Right. Okay. And I, I guess I'm kind of, and so there's so much to talk about here because I, I, you've done a lot in a very short period of time and you brought some big names, you know, like I say, it's the endorsement factor that kind of uh, appeals to me. These are what, like, like, even if we're talking about Agnico, they do large, low grade pit projects there's there's something in it for them and i guess it kind of in terms of their portfolio it balances their their portfolio and the, and the weighting of that portfolio so it, do they how much can you get from them rather than 
not not and I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about what do you get from them out of this deal? So, you know, the key thing there is uh, again from an endorsement perspective, they're a gold producer. You know, they really haven't done a large early earlier stage non-gold investment before. And in their release, they talked about spending two years of critical minerals. And again, you know, very proud that our team, you know, is is the recipient of that, you know, their first major investment, you know, outside the non-gold space that they've disclosed uh, publicly. Uh, you know, they they operate in, they're, in our, they're our neighbors, you know, the, the, they're two big operations and, and probably 70% of their overall company, NAV, uh, you know, is within a few hundred kilometers of the project. So in terms of, you know, being able to operate in the area, in terms of being able to explore in the area, you know, there's a whole pile of synergies, you know, that, you know, you know, could potentially be unlocked, you know, down the road, you know, as as we, you know, continue to move forward together. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to sticking with the, the, the partners here. With, with with Samsung, obviously, you know, you, you've, got, you've got Korea and Japan as big battery manufacturers, right? And I think there's a lot of conversation, a lot of narrative um, this year and what has been a very difficult um, year for, sorry, 2023 has been a very difficult year for, for Nicholas Hall in terms of the, the, the price, and we'll talk about it in a second, because yeah. uh, it wasn't unexpected or certainly by, by us on the on the mm-hmm. factory show. Indonesia is 50% of the market. You know, Philippines is another chunk on top of that. Surely, you know, I think I think the, the, the kind of in, innocent narrative of the market is, well, you know, Korea, Japan, they just kind of pop over to Indonesia. It's all, all in their backyard, and they pick up all the nickel they could possibly want now you've, indi- you've indicated us obviously clean green is what is what is needed but also the kind of china factor over there japan and korea are not immune to that so coming to canada i guess makes sense oh no 100 you know again for those people who've been listening to to the battery show you know the themes that we've been banging on on you know N- nickel philippines control more of the market than opec did you know at the peak of the market people poured a lot of money <laughs> in the 1970s into developing oil reserves, you know, outside of the Middle East, uh, because, you know, it had some pretty significant geopolitical consequences. You know, it's the same thing here. You know, if you really believe that North, you know, all of the global automakers and all of the, you know, the big global nickel consumers who make things, pretty critical things with stainless steel and even more critical things and and big defense things with nickel alloys are somehow just going to depend on Chinese control supply from Indonesia, you know, that's a, you know, a very, 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 you know, naive uh, theme. You know, the, the other piece that we've been banging on about is that, you know, again, you know, that Indonesian uh, nickel comes with a pretty high environmental footprint, both in terms of CO2. Ching Shan killed 15 people at their smelter a few weeks ago as with a furnace explosion. You know, th- you know, there, there, there's a, a massive number of reputational risks, you know, around that supply. And, and, and again, People want local supply and in North America, because just with the battery plants that we have, you know, we're looking at nickel demand of three, 400,000 tons, you know, in less than a decade from now. And that's almost triple, you know, where we are today. And there's almost no visibility, you know, on that, on, on that material. And, and again, why would a battery company, you know, a Korean battery company, go to the trouble of building a plant, you know, in North America if it was only going to end up being fed by raw material coming from, you know, China or Indonesia anyways, you know, it'd be far smarter to just, you know, build an even bigger plant in, in China and Korea. So again, I'm you know really hoping that this, you know, Samsung investment, you know, really wakes people up to the, you know, fact that, you know, just, just, you know, yes, Indonesia is going to produce a lot of nickel, but we need everything Indonesia can produce. And oh, by the way, you know, there are a lot of serious, you know, we're in 20 plus conversations, you know, you know, across, the value chain and across different industries in terms of people who want access to, you know, local Western clean supply. Right. Okay. So, and I think the other factors, maybe um, just, just kind of ram home here is, is, is the Chinese influence there on the Indonesia Philippines in terms of, you know, where the bulk of that production is going to go because they've funded it, they want it. Um, and that means that even the likes of Korea, even the likes of Japan, um, perhaps can't sort of tap into that. Um, so I think I think I think that's something that was sort of come out of the battery show um, time and time and time again over the past sort of three four years that we've been we've been doing that. Um, can we can we just kind of um, now focus on the cash? Mm-hmm. You got a bunch of cash. Now there's yeah. two things going on here. You've been saying this is a district wide play, and when most juniors say that, I kind of roll my eyes and go, "Okay, sure, it's a liability because you've got to finance this thing." You've now got a bunch of cash to, I guess, obviously. Get things nailed down with Crawford, but all of the other 
projects too, I, I suspect. So how, how do you allocate that cash? How are you viewing the opportunity in front of you? Yeah, so I, you know, I think the key thing here, you know, we did Crawford um, with raising $6 million uh, and, and, and put out the first res- resource in less than six months. Um, you know, that's before we figured it out as much as we know uh, n- know now. So, you know, you're going to see, we're going to work our way through, we're going to drill off the, the, the some of the 20 properties that we haven't tested yet. You know, but we already have a handful of, 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 of projects that are larger than Crawford. And so, you know, as the year goes on, you will see, you know, uh, you know, pretty big uh, drilling results. And then, you know, as we get into the second half of the year, you know, a whole series of resource updates. And so, you know, you know, Crawford now in total across all categories is, you know, is close to 10 million tons. Uh, and, you know, the first resource for Crawford was a few million tons. So, you know, we'll provide more detail in, in, in a few weeks as we sort of map out exactly all the drilling we're, we're going to do. But, you know, you're going to see, you know, you know, a multiple increase in terms of the resource footprint that we have, you know, versus where we are today. And if we're able to accomplish that, you know, that would make us the world's largest nickel sulfide district. Okay, so project number one, Crawford, advance ra- rapidly through the phases. Yeah. You've got a handful or so um, new, bigger projects, which you will start to, you know, um, release, you know, details on as, as, the, as the drilling happens, et cetera. Is that going to be easier for you now you've kind of proved up case study number one? Oh, 100%. You know, the, the, the thing to remember, right, we've gone from fifth drill hole to you know feasibility study halfway through permitting on Crawford you know in just over four years everything that we've done for Crawford because these projects you know share a significant amount of geological similarity you know it'll be an almost cut paste exercise in terms of all the subsequent work plans in terms of mineralogy in terms of metallurgy in terms of you know early stage permitting and so on and so forth so um you know it, you know this will allow us to build a pipeline, you know, of, of, of significant uh, nickel deposits. And again, with Crawford at 50,000 tons, if we're able to prove up another four to five, six projects or more over the next few years, you know, you're looking at, you know, a potential, uh, you know, throughput for the district of, you know, 200, 250, 300,000 tons of nickel. Okay. I guess what I'm getting to is because I want to make some money here. Yeah, um, it's been a really difficult two years in yep. in equities. Probably well, three years in equities, but de- definitely for, for you in the last couple of, couple of years, nickel's been going through a, a sort of a, a tough time. You know, with a, with a few sort of spikes here and there, but caused by m- market factors. But why is nickel going to recover? Why are we not going to see a sort of glut of nickel um, in the world? And um, why is that not going to continue to dampen the spirits of nickel produce or um, explorers? No, so you know, part of the reason we were keen to get both of these deals done because we really see 2024. You know, again, every year we've moved the ball quite a bit, but this is really going to be a fundamental, you know, unlocking of of value this year. You know, we've basically just gone through the bad part of the Lasan curve. You know, now you know as we move forward in terms of a construction decision by mid next year, you know, we start to climb out of that valley. So you know, you're going to see. Uh, major permitting milestone mid-year uh, completed, and by the end of this year, we'll be within you know less than six months away from our final permit. Uh, we expect to have our full financing package uh, for the project in place uh, before year end. And again, having three endorsements from major players is is going to be super helpful with the government. And again, a big focus this year is to try and get as much government zero cost or very low cost government funding in place and so you know you know that you know is, is going to be a major value creation milestone and, and and we're going to be pushing hard on that i was in in, in ottawa which is the where the federal government uh, resides here in canada uh, on friday to start those uh, uh discussions uh and then you know in terms of you know getting the engineering ready you know we're, we're, with the money from samsung you know we're going to be able to push that along so that when we get that permit in 2025 we're ready to put that shovel in the ground you know and, and again we're several years ahead uh, of our nearest competitor in able in being able to to drive production so you know and then on the nickel side you know as, as you said you know for most of last year we're calling for a sell-off in nickel it took a little longer to get there we've gone through it you know we went through a massive destocking in the battery sector driven by the collapse in lithium prices that we've seen. Those have bottomed, you know, the nickel prices is, is well into the cost curve right now. And so that should for, be a bottom for the stainless steel market. And so I'm expecting post Chinese New Year, we're going to see a pretty 
significant restocking cycle and, and based on what's happened in the past, you know, that, that can be, you know, pretty significant. In 2021, we saw 17% demand growth, um, you know, in, in, in nickel demand. You know, I'm not sure we're going to quite get that high, but I think it's going to be, a you know, a much, much, much more uh, exciting year. And we'll talk about it more on the battery show uh, early next week. But I think, you know, where we are with the project, where we are with the nickel market, you know, and then now with this money from Magnico Eagle to, to be really be, you know, unlock, you know, what we think is going to be, you know, the leading nickel sulfide district globally is, you know, three very significant, you know, value creation levers here. Right. And just do you think that the um, arrival of, of Samsung on top of Agnico, Nico Eagle on top of Anglo American will finally put a nail in the coffin of the low grade argument. I think so. I mean, we've we've already got a call from you know a number of the big funds that have been kind of circulate, you know, circling around, just waiting for that validation point. You know, and the phone has rang, you know, multiple times last week. You know, we've got a whole series of you know we're into investor conference season here. Uh, over the next six weeks, we have a big one in Toronto. Uh, the week after, uh, the week after uh, next, uh, we have uh, the one to one in Cape Town, uh, and then we have the BMO conference in February. So, you know, between those three conferences, you know, we, you know, we expect to have some much more constructive conversations with those institutions. You know, and and again, you know, given given our shareholding today, you know, starting to see one, two, three, four or more of those, you know, coming to the stories is going to have a you know pretty dramatic uh, you know price on the market value of the story. Right, and 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 obviously, okay, okay. So the the nickel price discussion of last year and you know the equities performance of the last two years, um, so it makes it difficult for the institutions to come in. And obviously, you know, they probably some of these guys are looking for a share price of over, let's say. A buck or two bucks or five bucks, whatever, whatever their mm-hmm. the remit of their their funds um, look like. Do you think that more institutional shareholders again should be a signal to what currently still is kind of large retail holding that this company has been validated? What you said has come to bear. You have moved quickly through the phases, but done it properly. Anglo doesn't done. You know, there are some mining companies that you know make thirty different, you know, junior mining bets a year. And, and, you know, it's, it's more, uh, if I bet 20 numbers on the roulette wheel, I'm pretty sure one of them might hit, you know, they've done their due diligence. They've done their work. They've made the investment, you know, Agnico Eagle, again, you know, they, they don't make, you know, a large number of earlier stage, uh, investments were their first public non-gold deal. You know, they've in their press release, they talked about looking at the critical mineral space for two years, you know, and, you know, we're top of the list. You know, again, you know, they've been one of the most successful mining companies. They're the largest mining company in Canada. And again, they chose to invest in us. Samsung is one of the world's largest, you know, battery makers. As, as again, along with all the other battery makers, they've got some pretty big growth plans that they need to deliver on. And again, you know, they, they're not, they haven't done 17 deals in the nickel space. You know, we're it. And so, you know, hopefully between three sets of due diligence by smart, successful companies will finally make it easy enough, you know, for the, the, the mining fund investors to, you know, to dip their toe in the water or, you know, even better jump in with both feet. Okay. And, and, and I want to be clear so on, on some terminology here. Okay. You, you put yourself forward as you are potentially expected to be, you know, based, based on the fees, uh, bankable feasibility studies, third largest nickel sulfide operation we know how big the kind of um in indonesia philippines uh, component is but what where's that where's the where does third largest nickel sulfide operation put you because it's it's yeah it doesn't want, i don't want to be like you know you know the, the third fastest one like a sprinter in in, in the world it's, it's gonna be what does this mean for the sector what does this mean for the for the industry and you know just just how big is this so, and, and again, you know, the Western world is a phrase that I didn't think I would use again. You know, we used to use it 20 years ago quite a bit, but given the state of geopolitics today, you know, we are the Western world's largest nickel sulfide operation. You know, laterites, just because of either environmental, uh, you know, footprint and, um, and, and some of the historical issues, you know, trying to bring some of those projects forward in the Western world, you know, the real growth, the only growth plan for mining company, Western mining companies is really nickel sulfide. And the fact that we're at the front of the list of the nickel sulfide pack, 
um, you know, is is going to stand us in very, very good stead over the next few years. Okay. Well, look, I, Mike, I appreciate it. And there's, I'm sure there's lots of else we can talk about, but I kind of want to keep focused in on on that. The validation from the industry, and more importantly, from a, from an Asian battery manufacturer like Samsung, and in the quantum that they have, you know, put down in writing here. So uh, well done on that. I'll see you in the next couple of, couple of days. We'll talk in the battery show more broadly about the market as we always do. For people who have suddenly got interested in nickel and suddenly think, well, there's money to be made in them that are hills, uh, we'll see you later this week. Mark, appreciate your time. Sounds good. Thanks, Matthew.